Welcome to Aderwash, population 241. It's a place that's steeped in history. The bell in this church was forged before Columbus sailed for America, and locals here have centuries-old claim to the land. It's where Ulrich Schultz was born, and it's where he intends to die. His family has owned this farm since 1560. He learned the trade from his father and plans to hand the business down to his son. This has been our homeland for centuries. It means everything to us. But my family and my fellow villagers here face a terrible prospect. Our homes could soon be razed and our businesses destroyed. It's what's beneath the land, an estimated 250 million tons of brown coal that threatens to wipe Aderwash and two nearby villages off the map. These machines are strip mining the ground for lignite or brown coal. And you can see the vast size of this operation. The coal mine behind me is already the size of several small towns, but the company, Vattenfield, wants to grow. The Swedish energy giant wants to double the size of this open cast mine. Vattenfall needs more lignite for its power plant, one of the dirtiest in Europe. The local children call it the cloud making factory. It's one of the most polluting fossil fuels, and it's supposed to be a thing of the past. Germany gets nearly 25% of its electricity from solar and wind, with a goal of 80% renewables by 2050. Yet the country burned more brown coal last year than at any time since the 1990s. The dirty downside of Chancellor Angela Merkel's nuclear phase-out. More than 900 villagers are at risk of being displaced, and for some, there's a feeling of history repeating itself. In this region, thousands had been resettled after the Second World War, when the communist government depended on brown coal to power its cities and factories. It makes me furious, just furious. First the government comes in, starts developing alternative sources of energy, and now we've come back to brown coal. I feel very disillusioned. We simply cannot go back to old practices. Residents have launched their own campaign to keep the diggers at bay, but it's questionable if they can keep up the fight. These are tiny villages with aging populations, facing an energy giant with deep pockets. A definitive decision has yet to be made on the fate of the villages. If Vattenfall does move in, it likely won't be for many more years. And approval by state authorities is still pending, although local activists aren't optimistic. So these three villages will basically be gone if the plans go through? If the plans uh, uh, go through the uh, parliaments, then the three villages are to be moved. Our laws protect the interests of the coal mining industry, and the industry managed to convince politicians that if the country abandons coal, there'll be major problems with electricity supply. The company has said that it will recreate Otterwash elsewhere. A church for a church, it promises, a house for a house. But for residents like Ulrich Schulz, giving up is simply not an option. My ancestors fought in the Thirty Year War with Sweden in the 17th century, and they defended this land. And I will also stand firm and fight for my land. I cannot imagine what happens if I lose this battle. Reporting in Otterwash, Germany, I'm Lucy Kafanov.